Art can be very inspiring. It's all around us. We're going to explore some of it today. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to Garden Style, a show about creative ways to grow, cook, and design your world. Now, in today's show, it's all about art, and I'm very excited about it. And what better place to be than, well, here in Bentonville, Arkansas, at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. Now, there's plenty of art here, but we're going to explore lots of other places where you can find art. We'll begin in Chicago at the Garfield Park Conservatory in their Monet Garden. Then we'll see how the Bernice Gardens in Little Rock incorporate sculptures into their garden. Later, some fantastic chefs show you how to make a plate more beautiful. Also in this episode, a museum that's gone to the dogs. So stay with us because just after the break, we'll get started. The Garfield Park Conservatory in Chicago is one of the largest, and I have to say, most impressive conservatories in the nation. The Monet Garden is one of their outdoor displays, and it's an adaptation of the Impressionist painter Claude Monet's well-known garden at Giverny, France. Steve Meyer tells us more about this beautiful space. Steve, this has to be one of the most popular places for people to visit, children and adults alike. It is. Experiencing Monet in a garden that I think yeah. he would have very much appreciated. Yeah, right here in Chicago. The iconic walk with the arches and oh, so yeah. forth, everyone knows. He used a different plant palette. It looks to me as though you've adapted plants that work really well for you here in Chicago. Yeah, we have to do that because actually different climate conditions that we right. have here than at sure. Chivernay. So we do a uh, little changing every year, so it's always different, I so see. something else to see. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You know, Steve, this strikes me as such a great example of taking an idea and interpreting it in your own way, and it's something anyone who has a garden, a home garden, can do. Oh, yes, they can. It's very easy to do this. Yeah. Well, design. you've just got a beautiful arrangement of annuals. There are all kinds of uh, marigolds and zinnias, grasses, the kale. Uh, it all works very well. And you've painted with a broad brush, if you will, uh, with these big, uh, bold blocks of color. If you squint your eyes and look at it, it looks very much like an Impressionist painting. Yes, it does, because we're using the complementary colors here. We're also using color and texture also right. in form. So. So, so you've got the complementary colors being the yellow, set at, the bright yellows of the marigolds set against the deep purples of the kale. Right, that's yeah. what, we, what we were looking for. We're looking for that uh, artistic look to it. Yeah, well, it's marvelous. Now, this is actually a bit of a garden room because if you, there's a path on either side of the central axis. Correct. Yeah, and over here we have the espaliers that uh, define the edge. And then over here, I think it's very interesting how, even though that's an administration building, you're covering it with vines so it doesn't become a distraction. Right, we want to block that out so the visitor has that visual thing of being in its own separate room. Right, focusing just mm -hmm. here on this. Yes. Yeah. But what a simple design, but it's so effective. Well, thank you. Located in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas, the Bernice Garden was created to celebrate community. You see, it features sculpture exhibits and host events in an effort to foster community interaction and instill a sense of pride in the neighborhood. And take a look at the sculpture. It's all throughout this garden. Some of it's permanent, others temporary. To get a little more information on it, let's talk to the events coordinator, Liz Sanders. Come on. Liz, this glass mulch is amazing and it, it creates a path that connects us to the sculpture. It's really beautiful. It was done by a, a company called Greener Living Sustainable Solutions and they actually apply it barefoot. You, <laughs> you could walk on it barefoot. Well, right there's now. a real testimonial <laughs> that it won't cut you. Exactly. So I guess the glass is tumbled so it it's is. soft. It is. It yeah. is. It's soft and it's all recycled. Um, so we're using something that's already there and it's beautiful. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this sculpture. Would this be part of your permanent collection or is this one that's temporary? 
This is a part of the permanent collection. This was nice. uh, donated by Michael Warwick. Yeah. He's a local artist and he's been invested in the garden for a long time. So yeah. most of the sculpture come from people from this area That's and right. around? We just recently opened up the competition of sculptures to regional artists, but ah. for, a, for a long time it's really been Arkansas only and in those the are the ones we yeah. really want to enter as much as possible. Well, you know, this whole concept of having a sculpture garden that can be used as an event space and also mm -hmm. serve as a garden for the community mm -hmm. is really a marvelous model it that is. other communities could follow. I, I definitely believe it. So Liz, this is such a large area. You have a lot of activity here. How do you all keep up with it from a staffing standpoint? That's a good question. Um, we do have a small paid staff um, and you met Laverne earlier and she's the master gardener along with She's uh, doing her a beautiful job here. with all the plants. Exactly. She really is incredible. And uh, I do a lot of the event planning um, and we have another woman who really helps with promotions and advertising. That's so we, uh, we're a small group. Keep it small and successful. Yeah, we do our best. Well, congratulations. It's really inspiring. Thank you so much. You know, there really is an art to plating up food. You have a blank canvas and you have beautiful ingredients. So like these gorgeous scallops. Hey, I'm in Hartford, Connecticut, the Firebox restaurant, here with Chef Sean Farrell. And Sean, tell me a little bit about your approach to painting on this canvas. Sure. Simplicity is what's important. Roasted acorn squash. Have a little butternut squash. Mm -hmm. Let it fall where it may. You don't want to get too caught up in being too intricate and perfect. You know, right. wherever it falls, it falls. And then we have a little bit of piece of peppers. Those are more beautiful. Sweetest. Yeah. Just same idea. We can wow, look at that color. A little pea green, light olive oil, a little salt, but very delicate, so you don't want yeah, to push yeah, too yeah, much yeah, onto yeah. them. Okay, next we're going to put the scallops on the plate. Well, okay. Alan, why don't you do those? So we can just right. arrange them right around. Okay, all right. Sort of creating a fortress here. Sure, and, and having this negative space on your plate, large plate's always better, especially, especially in a restaurant. Right, right, right. Everything kind of pops a little bit I more. I see, yeah, look at that. Just a little cauliflower puree. Really? So we just um, take cauliflower and just cook it well and some salt and water, and then we puree it, add a little bit of butter. It's nice creamy, it's got that creamy consistency without any cream. Oh my gosh, it looks fabulous. Okay, I'm gonna have to try that. So, I can just go. This is a little thing we kind of do in restaurants here. I'm sure you see that on cheese. Yeah. But it's just simple, little dog and, it, and it's being separated. Look at you. Just drag Brush it. Brush strokes. Just drag it The through. artiste. Yeah, it's very simple. It's not. Yeah, just pull it across. We'll just take a little bit of chives. And look at that. A little bit of green on the plate. Fantastic. Now this would be, well, a signature piece for you, I guess. It's something we serve in a restaurant. Simplicity at its best. Wonderful. We're going to be taking a look at this idea of plating up or presenting food. You know, certainly you want the food to be delicious, fresh, and all of those great things, but the way you serve it up, that's important as well. So easy to make your plates look beautiful at home. Uh, one of my favorite things to use are edible flowers. You can grow these yourself, just make sure they're not sprayed. I particularly like the snapdragon. Just a little sort of subtle uh, tuck of a flower here or there. Is, is beautiful, it's pretty on desserts. I also like to use microgreens, little baby uh, lettuces and herbs, a little tuft on the plate or on top of the fish is very attractive. Another easy thing is simple paprika in a little shake bottle. And if you, especially if you have a white plate with a nice broad band, just a dusting of it adds a little bit of color. Then I think my very favorite thing though is a good herb oil. This is really easy to make. This is actually parsley with just a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. And you can actually drizzle it on the fish or on the side of the plate. And again, just a different uh, texture, a different color, and it makes it look like you really know what you're doing. Now for my favorite course, dessert. We've got two different sauces here. I like to use a clear plate. We've got a chocolate syrup, and a fruit, this is actually a raspberry coulis that you can make just by simply simmering the berries of your choice with a little bit of sugar. We have vertical lines of the two sauces. Just with a toothpick, if you will drag the pick, you get sort of a, um, a chevron shape. Now look at the difference between our wonderful Mexican chocolate tart on the naked plate and now on the dressed up plate. Easy to do, doesn't that look great? 
I look for abstract, I look for depth, I look for color. So looking at this bowl right here, you would think when you're sitting at a table, you're gonna look down, you're gonna look down and see your food and it's gonna be vertical right here in the center. What we like to do to make it a little different is we like to take a little bit of our carrot ginger puree, use the side of the bowl, smear the sauce outwards to create almost like a horizontal part of the dish on the bowl. We go with our slaw in the middle, little piece of tuna here. We take our grilled octopus with our nagi sauce on it, put it in the center. We start building our heights up now. Now we have something on the side of the bowl that makes it look a little horizontal. Now we're gonna go vertical. We're gonna finish the dish with a little bit of micro cilantro, some baby carrot, which we've soaked in ice water to give it this nice little curl. Beautiful from our garden upstairs. And then we'll go with some fresh carrot stem on. And that's our dish. There's more garden style just after the break. I'm Barbara McNabb, the Executive Director of the AKC Museum of the Dog. You're at the Dog Museum in Queenie Park, St. Louis, Missouri, West St. Louis County, at the world's only dog museum, fine arts museum devoted to the dog. Why a dog museum? Because what better tribute to Fido than to have a museum devoted to the dog, with paintings, bronzes, porcelains, all devoted to man's best friend. The painting up in the center here is by William Henry Hamilton Trude. It dates from 1888, entitled A Domestic Scene. It depicts the trend between when attitudes changed from dogs being working dogs. This shows the dogs inside as companion pets. Your ratters, your terriers, your circus dog, your mastiff working dog, your bloodhound scent dog are now all together harmoniously in a domestic scene. Here at the museum, we do not get involved per se with breed standards. We're the keeper of the art. So if you have a lovely painting on a dog, a sporting dog, field trial dog, toy dog, we're the place to keep that for you to share it with the rest of the world. And this is where the history of the dog is kept through art. Bird and I are visiting the Dog Museum's Hall of Fame, which begins in 1991 through 2002 and includes such notables as Rin Tin Tin, Lassie, and Toto. And one day, Bert hopes to be an all-star dog in the Hall of Fame. He certainly is a good dog of merit. We're Fido-friendly. Dogs are welcome at the Dog Museum. They can go through all of the galleries with you. We make sure that dogs have treats, water, and there's a place to exercise your dog outside. Everything in the collection is acquired solely by gift donation. The Dog Museum does not have a purchase fund. Everything is donated through private individuals or perhaps through a dog club or an estate gift. It's the only dog museum of its kind in the world. This is it. And we've got about 3,000 works of art devoted to man's best friend. They're beautiful, they're charming, they're wonderful, and I think everybody would find something here that touches their heart. I'm here at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art where art abounds both inside and out. Certainly there's an impressive collection inside this beautiful building, but the architecture itself is an expression of art. And certainly when you step outside, there are many expressions of art in the landscape. 
why don't we catch up with a friend of mine and learn more about this special and unique place. Rod, this is such a beautiful day to be visiting Crystal Bridges. It's, it's the perfect day, and every day is different depending on what the cloud cover is or yeah. what the light levels are. You have and this mirror that it reflects is. the sky and it's the buildings true. and everything around you. And then at night, it completely transforms. So the building goes from receiving the light to sort of emitting light. Right, emanating it out yes. across the water. Yeah, it's beautiful How at night. fabulous. Water, of course, is so elemental, but it, it played a fundamental role in the creation of this place, didn't it? It did. It was a, it was a huge element in not only uh, the design of the space, but also the feeling of the environment here. The water flowing under an art museum. It's, a, it's pretty unusual, probably not <laughs> recommended. <laughs> but we don't worry about it because we're actually equipped for a 3,000 year flood. So, really? Uh, well, that, that is planning ahead. <laughs> yeah, we, we shouldn't have to worry about Very that. Very good. Rod, how did the inspiration for the museum come about? Well, the family had collected this property over many years and knowing that it would be for something special. Mm. And it was important to bring something cultural and artistic to the community and to the region. Well, obviously, Moshe Safi, the architect, took inspiration from nature and specifically this place. Definitely. You can see where he's created the beams that transfer through the building into the exterior so that he's bringing wood um, throughout the architecture of the space. Also the glass and the transparencies through the building really emphasize an experience of art and then connecting with nature. You know, entering into the building is really quite extraordinary because you go through the galleries, you're in these vast pods that are flooded with light and then you go into these smaller spaces or, or rooms that you know are, are much more contained and you can really focus on the art in those. Yeah, we call those the gallery boxes and they're oh. really in-depth experiences with art but in a context that's filled with light. So you can actually change the experience in those boxes depending on what kind of art is there. It's truly extraordinary and thank you so much for your time. Well, thanks for being here. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope you've come away with some ideas to discover art or even create some of your own art. You know, art's a wonderful way to bring inspiration to the way we grow, cook, and design our worlds. For Garden Style, I'm Alan Smith. <laughs>